Hello, my name is Rex Wen. I'm an Iron Speed Designer MVP, and today I'm going to talk to you about using third-party controls inside of Iron Speed Designer. And there's right now there's presently a couple of different ways that we can use rad controls in Iron Speed Designer. The first and perhaps the simplest way is to use the built-in templates for a few of the rad controls that are included. And these are the rad controls that are built by Telerik. And these are included in your Iron Speed Designer application. Uh, briefly, let's just go ahead and show those controls that are included. And here I've got my toolbox pinned away. Um, let's go down here to the Telerik area. And so Iron Speed includes a template for the RAD grid and the RAD tab strip. Now, today we happen to be using the RAD grid control in our application, anyways but I'm going to show you how to use third-party controls in IronSpeed Designer that do not already have an application template included in the IronSpeed toolbox. To use this control, what we're going to do is we're going to use Visual Studio. And ahead of time, I've dragged this control onto the form and using the properties wizard that comes with the Telerik control, I've configured how I want this grid to behave. I've enabled Ajax, paging, sorting, and scrolling, and all I did was simply to put a checkbox in each of these. Down here, I selected the data, or excuse me, up here I selected the data source that I wanted to use, and I went through the wizard for configuring that data source. Presently, I've got a fully functioning control that will run from within Visual Studio and bind to my database. Let's go ahead and do that now. And as you can see, I've got pagination set up, and I've got Ajax running and binding to my database. Each time I click the arrow, I'm loading new data into this table. So the challenge for a lot of you is, well, this is great. I'm able to do this in Visual Studio. There's no mystery. How do I get this application code that I've done here in Visual Studio into IronSpeed Designer and make it work? Well, let's go ahead and look at what happens to a Visual Studio application in order to use third-party controls. And then what we're going to do is we're going to simply reflect what Visual Studio has done into IronSpeed Designer so that our code will function the way we expect it to. And to begin with, let's, let's look at the Code Explorer. When I added the Telerik control into my application, this bin directory was created. Immediately, Visual Studio copied in this radgrid.net DLL and this XML file. And that's all that was necessary from the file standpoint to get this control working in Visual Studio. The other thing that it did was to configure a data source and make that data source visible in my web.config file. And this is an important thing to consider when you're developing applications and you're using third-party controls that you're going to copy over from Visual Studio is that you need to make sure to get any of the setting changes that it makes in the web.config over as well. That's well and good, and in a nutshell, this basically shows us how our control was configured and brought into our application. Let's go ahead and go through the steps of reproducing this so that this control will work in the exact same way in IronSpeed Designer. And to do that, I've gone ahead and I've opened some folders ahead of time. Here is our ISD video demo folder, and let me just go ahead and open this in its own window. This is the Visual Studio project we were just working in, and this is the bin folder I was just telling you about. Now, as you can see, these are the files that we need in order to use this project in our Visual Studio, or to use this control in our Visual Studio project. Let's go ahead and set this up so this will work in our IronSpeed project. And to do that, I'm just going to simply copy this bin folder as it is. Now, I'm just going through a series of alt tabs. I'm going to select my Iron Speed's RAD Demo project folder. And I can see that there's a bin directory here. This might cause some confusion, but in reality, this folder already contains some unique files that I'm not copying into it. So I'm simply going to right click in this directory and select Paste. And it's going to warn me that the bin folder already exists. And what I want to do is that it's going to say, do you still want to move or copy the files? Yes, I do. And it's not going to overwrite what's already here. Instead, it's just going to insert the files that we wanted to copy in there. And you can see our RadGrid DLL, 
our rad grid XML and our rad grid refresh. From a file perspective, this is all we needed to include in our IronSpeed application in order to make this work. Now let's go in and specifically copy over the changes that we need from our application itself. We've got a default ASPX page and specifically there's going to be two code elements that we need to reference. So I'm going to go into the source view of the ASPX page and what I'm looking for is this assembly reference right here. And so I'm going to shift select using shift plus end. I'm going to grab this entire line of code and I'm going to control C copy it and then I'm going to go into my Iron Speed Designer application and over here in the application explorer what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new page and um, for the sake of demonstration we'll let it be a master page and I'm going to call this rad grid and I want to put this in a new folder so I'm going to select my root application directory of rad demo. I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call it rad. Uh, let's do rad grid. I'm going to say OK. It's updated my file path and it still preserved my file name. I'm going to say OK. Now I've got this iron speed themed new page in my application. And to this, I would like to now add my rad grid control. In order to make this happen, what we need to do is go into this HTML view. And above this pink line here, we need to insert that line of code we previously copied. And we need to declare our intent to use the rad control in our iron speed application. Now you'll notice I'm doing this in the HTML view and not the ASPX view that you're used to seeing. The reason for this is that the ASPX view is read only. Oh, we haven't generated our application. Let me go back in here and let's just go ahead and build this. Now we're back in our HTML view and you'll see that in our ASPX view, it's actually gone ahead and copied that code over already for me. But you'll notice that this view is read only and the reason for this is that IronSpeed retains complete control for what gets entered into the ASPX page. However, anything that we would like to contribute to that, we can safely put in this HTML template page. And IronSpeed, upon build, will reflect the HTML that we've put in here over into that ASPS pa ASPX page for us. So we've declared our intent to use the rad grid control. Now what we need to do is get the specific code that we want to use from our application. And to do that, what I'm going to look for is the rad grid prefix. And I'm going to select everything inside of this. And by clicking here, it's highlighted the opening rad grid brace. And it's also highlighted down here the closing brace. I also happen to need my ASPSQL data source that I previously configured. And let's just make sure that there's no other child code in here. So I'm going to select the data source and I'm going to come all the way up and I'm going to select that open and closing rad grid statement. And again, I'm going to use control plus the C key to copy. And then I'm going to come back here into my iron speed application. And in order to know where to paste this code, I use a little trick. I like to come back into the design view and I'm going to insert an HTML table. Um, Let's see if we can do this. Let's actually see if we can insert an HTML row above. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. So let's insert an HTML table in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete. I'm going to select that column, press the delete. Oops. Let's go ahead and enter our code in here first. So I'm going to select this area. And you'll see that I've got an HTML table here. And as I click each of these cells down here in this quick view, it's showing me the contents of those cells. So I'm going to take this first one and I'm going to overtype this space HTML. And I'm just going to put an RADX control. And now when I click up here, that's going to be reflected in my table. Now I'm just going to go ahead and select this lower row and delete it. And this has cleaned up my HTML table now to only have one cell, which is fine. That's exactly what I would like to see. 
I'm going to save that, and I'm going to jump into my HTML view. Well, let me go back to my design. So I'm looking for rad x control. So in my HTML view, I'm going to put the cursor in, and I'm going to press control plus F to bring up the find dialog, and I'm going to type rad x control, and I'm going to tell it to find, and here it is. And this tells me immediately where I need to insert that code I just copied from the Visual Studio page. So <coughs> I'm going to bring this down, and I'm going to do just a little bit of cleanup, and I'm going to select this, and then I'm going to control V and paste. And you'll see that this just looks kind of nasty. Um, how this looks has no bearing on how it's actually going to look when it's run. Um, this is simply, I mean, you can leave it like this, or you can clean it up. You'll see I've got my open rad tag there, and I've got my close rad tag down here. I'm just going to insert another carriage return. And then I'm going to multi-select these lines. And I'm just going to tab this over and clean this up a little bit. Now you'll see that in a column perspective, my open rad tag and my close rad tag are in the same column. And now I'm just going to move my ASP data source over to reflect that as well and I will do this using tabs again. I've got a multi-select and I'm just going to use tab to format my code and make it look a little bit better. And for consistency, I'm going to go down here, make sure that my closing ASP data source tag is also lined up. Now my code's easy to look at for anybody who else who might come behind me. I'm going to save this code and now you'll see uh, if we look in our ASPX we're going to see that this hasn't been copied over and it has not reflected over into our ASPX page yet. And the reason being is just because we haven't built the application and instructed it to do so. So let's go ahead and build it. And now we're going to see in our ASPX code, if we look down here, it will have inserted that rad grid. There it is right there for us. And it's included our data source. Now it's tempting to think that we might be done at this point, but we're actually not quite done yet. We need to bring over those changes from the web.config file. Thankfully, Ironspeed will let us edit the web.config, and that's what I'm going to do now. The web.config in Ironspeed Designer might be a little bit intimidating when you first look at it. However, find the points that are familiar to you and just focus on them. You'll see here I've got the configuration section, I've got a config sections, and then I've got an app settings. What I'm looking for is the closing tag for this app settings. And I'm going to find it right here. And I'm just going to put a carriage return in here. And then you can put even, you, you know, you can mark that space with some characters just so it's easy to find when we come back over. And now I'm going to go into my Visual Studio application, go into the web.config. And you'll see after my closing app settings tag, I've got this connection string section. And that's what I need here. And so I'm just going to multi-line select, control C to copy, and then I'm going to alt tab back into Iron Speed Designer. I'm going to select my bookmark there, and I'm going to control plus V and paste this in. Now I've saved this, let's go see what our design view looks like. Here is my rad grid folder, and here is my rad grid page. Let's go look at our designer and see how this looks. Not too exciting. It looks like our control is missing, doesn't it? Well, let's go ahead and see what happens when we compile and run this. I did a little bit of look ahead peeking, and I noticed that there is a little critical step that I forgot to do. And this is something that might be useful for you, so I thought I'd include it in the demonstration. I want to right click this page and I actually want to set it as my start page and you can tell that it's my start page as it now has a green arrow next to it. Now when I go ahead and build and run this, this will be the page that Ironspeed shows by default. Let's go ahead and do that now. So here we go. This is our rad application grid and it's now a functioning piece of our Ironspeed designer application. As you can see here, all of my data is here. We can paginate within the control. And using Ajax, we don't even see a postback method as the control goes and gets more data from the data source. Now, this is just one example for how to use RAD controls inside of IronSpeed. And it's a very simple example that can show you how easy it is to work with an IronSpeed application, both 
uh, excuse me, how easy it is to use both Visual Studio 2005 and IronSpeed to come into an application, make changes, and then port that code into your IronSpeed application and how to get the look and feel that you created in Visual Studio.